If you're over 30, you're going to want to press PayPal because this section is on the graying of Ontario and indeed of Canada. Dr. Adam Kasim is the president of the Ontario Medical Association. He joins me right now because all we've been hearing aside from COVID is the fact that this is bringing to light, particularly those poor souls who suffered in uh, nursing homes across Canada, the fact that nursing homes and, and secondary care is at a terrible, terrible standard in Canada and we've been ignoring it. Well, what do we have to do? Well, Stephen, we know that Canada as a population, even in the province of Ontario, we are an aging and a growing population, which means that as we start to consider what the future of healthcare looks like, right. we have to understand that more healthcare services are going to be required. Right. And so the governments haven't been doing anything about that. Well, I think that when we want to be able to think about the future, we should take a long view approach. And again, sustainable investment investment in infrastructure, investment in people, investment in the people of Ontario, ultimately. We want to be able to deliver the best care that we possibly can, the most high quality care that we can at the time that our patients need it. So from the OMA's point of view, can that be done by the private sector or does it have to be done by the public sector? Do you take a political view on that or do you say we just want to get results? We want results. Stephen, we ultimately want to be able to deliver the best possible care that we can. And we need our health system partners, we need our stakeholders to get in a room and to understand that a path forward using COVID as a, a potential opportunity to transform our healthcare system is important for all of not only you, me, and my kids and your, your kids, but the, the, our future generations to come. Well, because it, years ago, it was generally just the public agencies who provided retirement homes. And then there's a few special people who got to use some very special retirement homes. And now it seems like it's all over the map. I know people who are in low grade, high grade, middle grade, and there's, and, and there's one where you go in this an apartment, and then you graduate or you degraduate to different care. I mean, that is a massive undertaking. Should not the private sector be called in as well with some great restrictions and encouragements and say, we got to get after this? Well, you've hit on a very important point, Stephen, which is we need to figure out a way forward for long-term care, for community care. What we know to be the best possible way forward is to have as many people age at home as possible. It's age. the cheapest and the best for them. And they're in a familiar environment, often with loved ones around right. them. It is a much better approach to aging in, in, in place right. as opposed to using the hospital uh, or other areas in terms of our healthcare infrastructure yep. to care for those folks. Okay, so it's not rocket science, but it is an application of political will and private sector will I think to that, get this answered. I think that there is a lot of work to be done, partnerships, teamwork, and a collaboration. Sounds like a good political campaign. Thank you very much, Dr. Three Minutes. Justin Trudeau is traversing the country on a government jet, handing out your money for all kinds of projects. I'm sure they're all extraordinarily worthy. Why now? He wants your vote. He is trying to buy a bigger liberal majority next time around. So, as we are one of the few news services which are not paid for by the government and by Justin, please support us. And thanks for watching.